What's up everybody? You know what time it is. It's 12 o'clock. It's time for the most exhilarating, electrifying daytime cooking show out there with a man who needs no introduction, the often imitated, never duplicated, Chef Greg. What's up, John? I appreciate all of that love and high energy to start the show. Yeah. He said it. This is lunch break presented by Rec Tech Grills. Appreciate you guys joining us today. We had a pretty big show last week. Huge show, Chef We had a Greg. huge show. Huge we show. We had over 1,500 live viewers watching us do that brisket. So we got to beat that. And to D beat that, I need you guys to smash that share button. Go ahead and drop some love down below. Give John a shout out because he's amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. He is the maestro of mayhem. He is the conductor on this crazy train. <laughs> and we're going to get a little crazy today. We've got a beef tenderloin. Uh, pick us up at the grocery store. I'm going to show you how you can save a lot of money and get more steaks. Who doesn't want to get better steaks and more of them and That's save some money at the about. same time? Yes, hallelujah. So if you guys want to see to save yourself at least 40 bucks and get like four more steaks, just go ahead and smash that share button. And let's see if we can't break that 1,500. Do you think we could viewers. do it, Chef Greg? I tell you what. If we break 1,500 viewers, I got something special. We'll, we'll, we'll run. I've, we, we'll oh, run, you got we'll, some specials? We'll, we'll run a giveaway. We'll run, we'll oh, run a contest. Oh, snap. But I can't tell you what it is just yet <laughs> because we got to beat that. It's going to be it. worth your while. I love it. So, um, But this is just a regular USDA choice. Nothing fancy. Just a regular old USDA choice beef tenderloin. It's also called a PSMO, okay? Peeled skin side muscle on. That's what that stands for, okay? Um, one thing I am not a fan of, and John, you can agree with me. Yes. When you go buy a steak at the grocery store, they right. just cut these into steaks. They yeah. leave all that gup on the side. You know why, Chef Greg? Because they're lazy. That's right. <laughs> all right, but you'll also notice $18.99 a pound, okay? This is tenderloin, okay? This is some highfalutin stuff. When this was cut into steaks at the same grocery store, $23.99. So we're already saving $5 a pound. There okay? you go. So at six pounds, that's 30 bucks. Okay? That's an extra that's an extra steak. Okay? So we're going to go ahead. And a lot of this, you don't need talent. You don't even need a really sharp knife. You just need some Rectech Grills nitrile gloves and really strong thumbs. Okay, I put this in the freezer for about 10 minutes because it is like hotter in Hades out here. It's a little warm, Chef Craig. I mean, a little warm is an understatement. Okay, so I said your thumbs, right? A lot of this stuff, it's kind of like a little bit of a membrane. You can literally just peel this back. Okay, and you don't got to be like a savage animal about it because you don't want to like rip the meat. But you can get in there and pull a lot of this stuff off. Okay. What? And you'll notice this side muscle here. Just follow the yellow brick road. John, how many people have we got out there watching? We have 439 people watching right now. All right, 439. Let's make that 880. Go ahead and smash that share button. So yeah. This is going to be that side muscle. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a knife and just literally follow the yellow brick road. Okay, we're just going to take that side muscle off. Is that side muscle still usable, Chef Greg? Shoot, yeah. We will show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so now that side muscle is off. So now if we bought this from the grocery store. Remember, we paid $18.99 a pound. I guarantee they're gonna charge you $2 just for that. And they're gonna use this, okay? So this is easily about a pound, pound and a half, usable stuff. So now we've got a little bit more work to do. You can see we've got this silver skin here. You don't wanna eat that, it's tough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife right here, make a little tick towards the back. And just like fish skin, we're gonna hold on to that, angle the knife up, and just push backwards and take that silver skin right with it. Oh, sharp knife. It's definitely, definitely starting to look, resemble more of what you would see when you go ahead and just buy those steaks. I can see how it's already round, Chef Greg. There you go. And I just sharpened my knife. Normally your knives are not sharp enough to cut straight through the silver skin, but I literally just sharpened this right before we started. Okay. So again, we're just going to get in there and clear up some of that silver skin. We're not gouging the meat. Okay. 
So again, just take your knife, make a little piece to hold on to, angle that knife up, and you can just push straight Chef back. Greg, show them what that silver skin looks like after you've pulled a piece of it off. Like how much meat is left on that? Oh, nothing. Like it's, here, like, there you go. It's silver skin. That's what I'm talking about. Shoot, yeah. So like I said, you can save a lot of money by doing it yourself. There is no need to waste money at the grocery store. You can go to a, you know, Sam's Club or a Costco and probably find it at a cheaper deal. I had to go to a, uh, I'll say a healthy food store. So this is a grass-fed, grass free-range uh, cow. There's no hormones, no preservatives. So this is a bougie cow. So Chef Greg, so they, should they look for something specific or any, you're saying any tenderloin will do? Any tenderloin will do. And then again, this is the beef tenderloin. It's one of the most tender muscles of the cow. So getting a USDA prime, over a USDA choice, in my opinion, it's no added value because it's already tender enough as it is. And the tenderloin really doesn't have much flavor to it since it's a muscle that doesn't really see much work. Right. So I'm not wasting my money on a Wagyu. I'm not wasting my money on, you know, a, a prime. A USDA choice works for me. Now you have two options here. There's a little piece of silver in between. Now, okay, this would be you know, your filet mignon would be cut out of here. Your Chateaubriand is also up here. Okay, you can also tie this. But what you can do is if you want, you can remove this or leave it together. It's up to you. For me, I want my steaks to be a uniform thickness. I think that'll make it cook a lot more evenly. Because what you don't want to do if you're cutting, let's say you're cutting 10 ounce steaks. A 10 ounce steak here is going to be kind of skinny and it's going to be a little bit thicker here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove that muscle right there okay and we'll start cutting steaks so what I'm gonna do is we'll kind of square that up and this is we're not letting that go to waste so I want to get a nice steak boom Yahtzee guys put any comments questions or concern in the comment section I'll be reading them out to chef Greg as he trims up these steaks and like I said nice even consistent we're not wasting much. Now, the, the tail meat here, you can kind of clean up some of that fat if you want. Okay, the real thick stuff you really can't, can't process. And I can cube this up and make uh, steak tips. Maybe get a cast iron Ooh. pan, screaming hot, or flat side of the sear kit. I like that. And do some steak tips. So I again, like to use that cube. for my stroganoff, chef. Shoot, yeah. Who doesn't like beef tenderloin stroganoff? Mm -hmm. You know the secret to uh, Ray Carnes' world famous chili? Tell me. Beef tenderloin. Beef tenderloin? Yep. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go. We've got you know, some nice beef tips here. Now this can be easily be cut into steaks too. We'll go ahead and just kind of clean it up just a hair. We have some people out here saying, uh, Brandon says he does the same thing with a whole pork tenderloin. Absolutely, just a little bit smaller. And again, those are gonna be tips. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steaks out of that six pound filet. And normally you go to the grocery store, you get two of these, what do they charge you? $40? That's true. 50 bucks for just two? That's we true. We only spent 118 for the whole thing. That's right. Okay, so we got eight beautiful, even steaks right there. We've got some nice stew meat, uh, not stew meat, but uh, beef tips. This is super tender, okay? Now onto this side muscle. It's a little bit of work. What I like to do is just cut it into a little bit more manageable sizes. Chef okay. Greg, Tom Quinn asks, is there a certain thickness they must be? No, I mean, I just, that works for me. I'm a hungry boy. That's about a, you know, an eight ounce filet. I mean, Chef John's growing. It's growing round. He's growing boy. That's right. You know, so this is that side muscle. Now, some people will tell you they grind that up. No one grinds this up. So what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up some of that fat and sinew. I'm not getting crazy with it, okay? And this is something that the grocery store is going to remarket something else and charge a lot of money for. Why, okay? So boom, this is just fat, okay? It's just fat and silver skin. Chef Greg, we got a question from Tom Quinn again. He asks, are tenderloins better than a ribeye? I mean, my favorite cut is going to be that spinalis. So I love ribeye. But depending, every now and then you get on sale, you can't beat it. 
But again, in here, it's going to clear up some of that fat. Okay. And you don't have to get crazy with it. Just get the big chunky stuff off. Chef Greg, Corey Cruz asks, could you butterfly the, these now, these uh, steaks now? Those? Yes. I don't want to do I want to leave that just like it is because it's perfect. If uh, your loved one likes a well-done steak, go ahead and buy them a New York strip. But no, <laughs> just kidding. If you wanted to, you could. Like, let's say, okay, this is probably the ugliest steak of the bunch. If Country Club wanted a well-done steak, after I smacked him and he got off the ground. Right. Yeah, I mean, you could butterfly it to make it thinner, but you put that on a plate, it looks like you are the redheaded stepchild of the family. <laughs> like, so that would be the only reason why to butterfly to help it cook uh, yeah, if you more want, evenly if faster. Yeah, if you want more of a well-done steak, go for it. Um, oftentimes at restaurants, and John can agree, you order well done, you get this. Yeah. Okay? You don't want that. No. You want this. Yeah, and okay. we don't know why you're eating your meat well done anyhow. That's yeah, what the, all now. the chefs in the kitchen are thinking. Why did they order this $60 steak it's well just, done? Just, now we have seven nice steaks because you made me ruin one on camera. <laughs> so, but again, we got that side muscle meat right here. And again, this was from that first piece of side muscle right here. Okay, so great utilization. You could skewer those. If you want to make some killer kebabs, you could go ahead and skewer those, make some just banging kebabs. I love kebab, Chef. So chef, I'm ahead. sorry. No, a lot of it. people are asking about uh, their, your knife skills, first of all. They said your knife skills are on fleek, uh, and they want to know about uh, sharpening knives and where to purchase good knives at. So maybe next week we do a knife sharpening demo as a part of a uh, lunch break. I, I don't know. They love, I Go think ahead they and love smash that. that share button, comment down below if that's what you want to see. We still got to cook something. That's right. Um, but I like using glass stones, shafts and glass stones. I like sharpening by hand. I think it's kind of fun. It's therapeutic. Um, if you don't have the really steady hands, you can utilize, um, like a jig style. So I, I like the wicked edge. I think it does a really good job sharpening the knives. Uh, maybe there's somebody in your local area that does it and, uh, you know, they can charge you maybe five or 10 bucks a knife. It's worth it. Yeah, totally. Let's go ahead and we're going to kind of redecorate this board here. We'll leave country clubs well done steak off of here. Cause I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> now, I don't want to serve all these steaks. Let's just cook four steaks. What I can do is I can easily vacuum seal this into pairs, and that way I know I've got two steaks um, and freeze those. I can go ahead and vacuum seal this, get it nice and, and flat. But again, look at all that usable meat. Okay? This, people throw away. Lots of good value there. Okay? Don't, don't be wasteful. And you cleaned it really, really fast. You trimmed that stuff up it's, really it's, fast. It's not hard. It's not hard, but if you guys want to see some more crazy fast stuff like that, you want to see some brisket prep, you want to see some filet mignon, some beef tendon prep, smash that share button. Let's share it with everybody. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we've got our steaks right there. Super simple. Now, it's going to blow your mind again. In this jar, I know we've talked about it a lot. Yeah, we have. Come on, get, get you a whiff in here. Come on. Smell that. Smell that. Smoke salt. This is just, well, actually you can't because the lid's on. There you go. Smoke salt. Smoke Super salt. simple. We put that grill on low. Let it run 180, 200 degrees. A couple hours. Man. Smells so good. It like, does. It's just delicious. That was a divine inspirational moment when you decided was, to do that. You know what? It was a good call. It I'm not really going to lie. Every now and then I have good ideas. <laughs> uh, typically all good ideas are my wife's. Shout out. So um, every now and then food ideas, I have a good one. I'm going to grab some olive oil. We're just going to rub these down. Just a little bit of olive oil on all sides. All right, top fan Bobby asked, Chef, would you wrap these in bacon? And why would you need to wrap them in bacon? <sighs> I'm not a fan of the bacon wrapped because I'm gonna grill the steak on this side. It doesn't get crispy here. I don't want limpy bacon. I'm not a limpy bacon kind of guy. I agree. I, I don't ever wrap my tenderloins with uh, bacon. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a little of that smoke salt. Season the top. You gotta season the sides. Here's a trick for you too. You can always let's just do this. Let me move this out of the way. Making a mess, making a mess, making a mess. All right, you can always season your board. Okay, and then just roll the steak, okay? You want seasoning everywhere. Chef Greg, top fan Matt Black asks, would it be worth adding seasoning before you vacuum seal and freeze? No, because you don't want to cure the meat. Um, and the same thing like uh, some folks ask about sous vide. 
Um, I don't season or salt if I do long sous vide because I don't want to cure the meat. Um, it's just preference. But we're cooking meat, so you know we got that Ben's heifer dust. Salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, chili powder. And again, you got a big old cutting board. You can season everything. And then just roll it around because I want every bite to be just as good and tasty. Chef Greg, uh, Matt Struggs asked, do you ever sous vide thicker cuts of meat and then finish them on the smoker slash grill grates? You can, but I'm kind of a little bit lazy. So for me, I'm not going to go through that step. I will uh, do a reverse sear. I'll go oh, ahead and okay. set that grill on, you know, 200 degrees or so and cook it. Maybe I'm going to cook these fillets to an intern about 110 degrees and then sear them off. Um, but sous vide doesn't add a lot of flavor. You've already got a really tender cut of meat. So for me, I'm not going to mess with it. But we've got the RT700. I said t I said 20 minutes. We're at 16 yeah. minutes. We already trimmed that tenderloin. We've already got these seasons. You're I'm ahead of schedule right you, now. No, you're killing it. i got to slow it down. You're killing it right now, got to slow it down. You're killing it. All right, hey, guys, go ahead and smash that share button and show us some love. Let's beat 1,500 people watching live, and we'll give you out something super fun. Maybe we'll do an office pick. i got some pretty cool swag in the office. They do. All right, so let's get these on the grill because these are going to take um, about 10 minutes. So okay. let's go ahead and put these on the grill. We've got the uh, RT700 preheated to 500 degrees, and i got a sear kit. We're going to go ahead and just give that a little bit of a smush. Why are you smushing it, Chef Greg? Because I just want to make sure I've got really good contact with that sear kit. Okay. Chef Greg, top fan Ed asked, do you like hot and fast or reverse seared? Um, both, actually. Um, it just depends how lazy I am. If uh, people are hungry and we got to eat, we just go ahead and go hot and fast. If we're sitting by the pool, kind of hanging out, lollygagging a little bit, we'll go, uh, we'll go low and slow for the reverse here. It kind of just depends on how you want to live the rec tech lifestyle. Ray Carnes is in the comment section, Chef. What's up, Ray Ray? We've got a delicious, delicious beef tenderloin. We showed you how to cut it up right here. Save you some money. Go buy the whole tenderloin. Okay? That's right. All right. So every good steak, okay? I don't care what steakhouse you go to. Every good steakhouse has a really good salad. Yep. And uh, we're going to do our spin on side of like a, a blue cheese wedge salad. Yeah. Okay? I love but it. But I hate peeling garlic. I hate peeling garlic. Do you? I do. You smell like garlic. I think like, it smells delicious. Well, I mean... Yeah, until like you roll over at night and you're like, it you smells like garlic and onions. That's I mean, what I'm like, oh buddy, I'm about to start munching on my hand in my sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crush this up with my hand, break it up, I put it in a mason jar. Chef Greg, real quick, what kind of salt was that that you smoked? Was it kosher? Uh, just kosher salt. Yeah, this is just uh, Morton's kosher salt. We use those Kingsford hickory pellets. We let that go for about six hours. Um, this is not gonna go bad at salt. Okay, that's why I think it's really funny. Have you seen those uh, Himalayan salt blocks? Yes. They have an expiration date. Okay. Like salt is like one of the oldest substances on the earth. I didn't know that it, it ain't had going an, bad. Yeah, I didn't know it had an expiration date on the salt. Salt, just for the record, does not go bad. So I'm gonna put it in this jar. And I'm gonna shake it, and this would be a good job for the Sherpa over there holding the wall up. But you just shake it like this. Oh, he's showing y'all tricks now. Okay, and what's gonna happen? is that garlic just comes right out of the, uh, the shell. Yeah, that is a super trick. I actually do the same thing. I'm not gonna lie, I do hate peeling garlic too. Okay. But then all you do is just keep shaking it. I need a bigger jar. Maybe this would've been good for one, <laughs> one bowl. And that was kosher salt, everybody. Kosher Shoot, yeah. salt is what Chef and You can Greg use sea salt, make. but again, just pick through here. Look, it just comes right off. And then your garlic is down here. Super good. All right. But I'm done stinking like garlic because I already did this. <laughs> we made our steakhouse butter. And our steakhouse butter is really simple. We've got some sage, some oregano, some parsley, some white wine, some garlic, more garlic. And we're just going to mix that up. And this is going to be the topping for our steaks. But we're not done yet because I told you this is a blue cheese steakhouse salad. So we're going to take some of those blue cheese crumbles. We're going to make a nice blue cheese butter. Okay. And just mix that up in there. 
Yes, that's looking righteous right there. I mean, but we got a lot of butter here. And that's like, I don't know, a pound of butter. All right, what do you got there, chef? Crusty bread. I'm a fat kid at heart, people. Okay? <laughs> I might not look like it, but I like food. I think that's kind of like a prerequisite of being a chef, though. And being like an internal, like a just a fat kid at heart? Yeah, you have to love food. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I remember when my parents thought I was crazy for wanting to go to the culinary school. They literally thought I was going to work at the Waffle House. What? Yeah, they did. They literally thought I was going to work at the Waffle House. Show them, my friend. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. Shoot, yeah. Now, having said that, I would have loved, still do to this day, would love to rock a ship behind the Waffle House. Dude, those chefs behind the Waffle House are legit. When it I gets mean, crank, crunk in there, all those people are piling in. It's now, I don't, want the, I don't want like the 2 a.m. shift. You can give that to Late Night Munchies. <laughs> okay, you can find that show. I'll take that. Every I'll take Thursday at 11 o'clock. Oh, that's so great. You do. It's on Facebook right now. It's going to move. Tell them, Chef Greg. It's going to move, but Tell right him, now Chef it's Greg. on Facebook. I'm just going to grab some of this uh, delicious blue cheese garlic butter bread because why not? I why saw not? it in there. Yeah. But let's go ahead and make this, uh, this salad. We've got some spinach right here. We've got some arugula, and i got some iceberg. And people say, how do you get rid of the core of the iceberg? You just grab this salad. And you just be a man about it, just like that. <laughs> Core gone. Boom. Okay. And I don't like uh, cutting my lettuce. I'm a ripper. Okay. I like uneven shapes, sizes. Okay. We're just going to go savage. Just like that. Chef Greg, if somebody did not like blue cheese, what other cheese could you put in there to really make that pop? I don't like blue cheese, but like this, it's delicious. I mean, you could use Parmesan. You could use like a really nice sharp cheddar. You could use Brie, a Fontina. Honestly, with as fatty as this is, you need a little funk, okay? okay? A little funk will go a long way to making this really, really delicious. All right, so we've got our greens in here. They're not seasoned. There I'm going to use this whole jar by the end of the year, I promise. <laughs> a little bit so. of smoke salt. Okay? A little bit of that Colden's freaking Greek. I love that Colden's freaking Greek. All right, it's time to rotate our steaks because we want that perfect hash mark. So what you can do is grab your tongs. You're going to grab it like this and then rotate it to a fresh part of the sear kit. So here we go. We're going to grab fresh part of the sear kit. Grab on a 45. Fresh part of the sear kit. Grab on a 45. Fresh part of the sear kit. Chef Greg, what t uh, temp are you cooking at? We're at 500. We can go ahead and just crank that bad boy up to full if we want. But 500 is plenty hot enough to get a really good sear. Like I said, 10 minutes, these things are going to be done. Um, about every two and a half to three minutes, we're going to rotate. I like a nice rare steak. Chef John is with me. He likes a rare steak. Yeah, boy. Um, let's grab a platter. Because we're, we're going family style. Not Lady in the Tramp style, just family style. I love family style. All right, so a couple weeks back, we did some slamming Italian Sammies. Okay, you can find that video on YouTube. Go back. It's worth it. This is that vinaigrette. It's going to be uh, one part balsamic, one part red wine vinegar, four parts olive oil. We got some herbs, some garlic. Now, this is kind of my twist on that delicious blue cheese wedge salad. Because for me, you get a big old chunk of lettuce and just gobbles and gobbles of dressing. But the greens themselves don't have enough flavor. So what I want to do is go ahead and dress this with something kind of acidic so that yes. when I eat it with that blue cheese dressing, it's just going to be like slamming. Yeah, we're sorry. I don't know what happened. It just jumped real quick. The internet jumped. We lost a few people, but we're back at it, Chef okay. Greg. You're hey, doing great. You know what? That's what happens when you go live. Yeah, that's people. right. You're breaking the internet right now, Chef Greg. 1,500 people will get something cool out of the office. We do have some kind of fun, swaggy stuff that people might not know about yet. So make sure you guys join us at rectechgrills.com. Go to the bottom of the page. Sign up to be an, an insider because you never know what you might find 
in your email box. Chef Greg, take us through it again real quick. What are we doing today? All right, so we showed you guys how to break down a whole tenderloin. We showed you guys how to cut steaks, how to get 100% utilization of that beef tenderloin. Well, this is a cooking show, so we got to cook something. We're grilling off those steaks. We're going to do my rendition of a delicious blue cheese wedge salad. We've taken some arugula, some spinach, some iceberg, some vinaigrette. And yes, I'm cutting without looking at my hands. It's okay. <laughs> I won't hurt myself. Trained professional. Okay. I like a little onion in my salad. Country Club is bright red right now. It's He's okay. He's doing it. He's doing it. Because trained professional. Yeah, you are. Okay. So we're going to grab this. We're just going to go a little red onion over the top. Okay. Because I like red onion. John, you like red onion? Psh, did we have a black president? Shoot you. I love red onion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I know it's kind of non-traditional, but we got some uh, heirloom tomatoes. They were looking really good. We're going to put a little tomato wedge on there. Why? Because it's how I want to live the rec tech lifestyle. Maybe you don't want to do a tomato. That's cool. That's how you want to live your rec tech lifestyle. I love purple tomatoes. We actually have some of those up in the garden right now, Chef Greg, just to grow in. Are they, are they ripe and ready to go? They're not ripe and ready to go yet, sad to say, but they are growing. Because if they're ripe and ready to go, I guarantee you they're going to disappear. Yeah. All right, so we got some tomato on here. But this is uh, Chef John and mine's lunch, the best part about Rectech Grills. That's what I'm talking we about. We can eat like kings. We'll share. Oh, for sure. Af after we eat. Yeah, we got to make sure that it's delicious, right, Chef Greg? <laughs> Shoot, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll go over here. We'll grab a little bit of our blue cheese dressing. This is just a buttermilk blue cheese dressing that I made. Mm. All right, so a little buttermilk, a little uh, mm. white wine vinegar, some blue cheese, mm. some heifer dust. I just want to kind of do one of those. Yes. That looks delicious, Chef Greg. And this way, the greens have flavor from that vinaigrette we made you get a little funk from that blue cheese all right country club just rotate Woo. look at that sear right there boy picture perfect sear those are a winning steaks right there chef i mean i know i'm a professional but the darn grill does everything <laughs> i gotta be careful how i tell people that because at some point like this is going to infringe on uh, my employment status if we make it too easy. <laughs> Anybody could do it. It is that easy, it's everybody. It's that easy. All right, so we've got our delicious blue cheese wedge salad. But you know what we're missing, John? Bacon. Shoot, yeah. So we've gone ahead and candied us some bacon. Ooh. This is delicious applewood smoked bacon that we have covered coated and smoked for two hours With man that, that stuff looks delicious who doesn't like some bacon i mean this is like double smoked bacon and this is going to be with that honey rib rub over the top yes now it's a little limpy right now because it'll cool off and it'll crisp up a little bit that's right and that's okay here you go country club you want to try it Oh, look at country getting a little piece of bacon first. And I like big chunks of bacon. Yeah, I like it thick and chunky too, Chef Greg. This is a daytime show, John. Oh, okay, daytime my show. bad, my bad. All right, so I'm going to forego putting this on the salad right now because this is hot. I don't want to, uh, to wilt that salad. But I'm going to go ahead and grab our bread. That's that blue cheese garlic butter. Look at that. Look at the bubble bubble right there. That's telling me it's happy. Mm. All right, so we flipped those steaks over. Now, on that back side, I might not need to get the hash mark on the back side. Why? Because my steak might be done before I get there. So you got to grab your instant re thermometer. Okay, and I stole this from Jody because it's got his name on it. <laughs> I'll put it back. I know where it goes. It goes in his apron in that pocket right there. The guy's got everything. He does. He has everything. That apron's got it all. And he has more because it was his birthday yesterday. Oh, buddy. And I appreciate everybody sending Jody out some love. That's right. Some well wishes. But now we're just going to take that instant re thermometer. We're looking for about 125 degrees on those steaks. Now, Chef Greg, 
It's also true that when you get the uh, perfect diamond marks on one side, you're only serving one side of the steak. So it's Shoot, not yeah. like you can see the other yeah. side. This is our presentation side. So that's going to be up. What goes down, nobody sees. <laughs> so at that point, I'm just making sure it's cooked to perfection. That's what I'm talking about. Chef Craig, time and temp on that two hour bacon. They are going crazy about the bacon. 225. Forget about it. 225. 225. 225. Season it up with whatever you want and let yep. it roll out. And this was thick. Like this was like, I mean, like extra thick bacon. This was like not quite a half inch, like way thicker than a quarter inch. But country club will tell you, they're really hot. That's what I'm talking about. really good. But that's going to give us tons of salt and smoke in there. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> All right, we're at 100 degrees on those steaks. Maybe five minutes, that's it. Any flip on the bacon? No, zero. I use that nonstick cooking mat available at rectechrolls.com. Go ahead and pick you up two or three of them. You're going to utilize them for anything from jerky to delicate items. I love making salsa in mine. I chop up all the vegetables, throw it in that mat, smoke it off, throw it in the food processor, make some delicious smoked salsa. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the women of Rectech page, a lot of them were doing that smoked salsa recipe the other week. So shout out to all of those amazing women grillers out there. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you go in that search bar and check out, uh, I think it's uh, Girls of Rectech, Girl yeah. Grillers of Rectech. What's the page w name? Wim Our moderator will tag it down below if they can. There you go. Chef Greg, two quick questions for mm -hmm. you. Um, where I have the first one. Uh, what kind of bread are you using? Uh, this is some delicious baguette bread. I like the crispy, crunchy stuff. Lots of pockets for the butter to kind of go in because like the chef's best friend is butter. Mm -hmm. So this is my bowl. I will share with John because he's earned that for that privilege. Um, but I like it because you saw it earlier, all that butter just bubbling in there and that crispy crunchy crust is going to hold all that delicious butter in place. Mm. Chef Greg, so top fan Rick asks, can you put the bacon right on the grill grates or the stainless steel grate? Be very careful with that, buddy, because if you are going uh, the bacon on the sear kit, you're going to burn it. Okay. But you can put the bacon directly on the stainless steel grates, no problem. But if you're at 500 degrees, hashtag disclaimer, I do not recommend searing your bacon. Bad things happen. It's not good. Now, these are going to finish quick, so you kind of got to grab your insert thermometer and kind of give it a little poke. Chef Greg, could you use the same temps if you're going to do this on the 340 uh, Shoot, or yeah. the 590? We're at 112. We're coming up nicely. 118 in the back. That's a kind of a, th a thick one there. We're getting close, like two minutes and we're pulling these bad boys off. Yeah, the temperatures would be the exact same whether you're cooking on the RT340, the RT590, the RT700, the 2500, or that bullseye. But in that bullseye, I'd go ahead and I would just crank up riot mode. Just just grab that string, just start that motor, riot mode. That's where it's at. Top, 749 degrees. Top fan Ryan asks, is the grill mat dishwasher safe? It is, in fact, you can wash it in the sink. I, I prefer to wash mine in the sink with some Dawn and a scrubby sponge. Uh, they are dishwasher safe. They will last a little bit longer if you wash them by hand. I've had mine for almost a year and they still look pretty good. Um, but again, it's just however you want to live your Rectech lifestyle. I have three kids, which means I have four dishwashers because there's one in the kitchen and the three of them. So for me, they can wash it in the sink. I love that. All right. Woo. I feel like Chef John over here sweating like a... <laughs> I did wear a black shirt. Probably a bad move today. Probably a bad move. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up our salad here. Chef Greg, could you use some of that bread as croutons maybe? Shoot, yeah, you could. That's what I'm talking about. Blue cheese, garlic bread croutons. So what temp are you shooting for, Chef Greg, with those steaks? Um, about 125, and that way they'll carry up to about 130. So we've got mine and Chef John's lunch. Mm -hmm. And we'll do is we'll go ahead and slide this back, clean up my workstation. Man, that looks delicious, guys. Show, show Chef Greg some love. All right, so now our bacon's cooled down. We can go ahead and put our candied bacon lardon on the top, our smoked candied bacon mm. lardon. Ooh, child, please. We're also going to add a little bit more of that blue cheese. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I know John's a blue cheese kind of guy. Yes. You like the funk. I, I like the funk. And then you know what? Let's just go ahead and put 
a little bit more of that on the top. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, we're almost done, Country Club. We're going to grab that blue cheese butter. The last minute of the cook, just go ahead and take a dollop of butter. You want more? Shoot, yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's it. Last minute of the cook, put that butter. What's up, guys? How you doing today? Live studio audience watching from the Rec Tech Rolls Breezeway up there. Those steaks are almost done. That last maybe 30 seconds to cook. We're going to put that blue cheese herb butter over the top. Go ahead and smash that share button because you know you guys want to see it. And I want you to see it. So there we go. Getting close. Getting close. John, any good questions out there? They are love, love, loving it, Chef Greg. Do we get to give anything away today? Okay, so I think we should give something away because we got up to like 750 people, 760 something people. And then we and, broke the internet. And then we broke the internet. And then we've got, we're at, right now we're, we're holding strong. Mark Zuckerberg, I need you to people. do something about the internet because <laughs> it's not us here at Rectech Grills because we have the most insane internet here. I blame Facebook. Yeah. I think I think Facebook is trying to censor this delicious. I meal. think they really are. I think you broke the internet, up. literally. God. You broke it. Anyway, but we've got our play of like kind of that black and blue salad. We got that delicious steak, finishing off with that blue cheese herb butter. Mm, Child, mm. please, these steaks be nice and rare and amazing. We've got some arugula. We've got some spinach. We've got blue cheese crumbles. We've got the candied double smoked bacon we got our blue cheese butter crostini over there child Kill, please killing it all right i'm gonna go ahead and grab these steaks off of here look at that and what you don't want to do is cut right into that steak we just want to like let this rest on the cutting board for just a minute go ahead and get you a glass of wine get you a good old cold beer Chef We're Greg, hold on. Relax. I gotta change your batteries out real My quick. Batteries out. Yeah, hold on, one real quick. And you are We're breaking all kinds of stuff around here. Batteries, internet. <laughs> But there we go. We've Man, got our steaks delicious, Chef, resting. Right? They're delicious. Ben Lowe coming in clutch with those double-A batteries. Yes. Yes, he did. But I'm not ready for lunch. What about you? Yeah, Van said he could smell this all the way in North Augusta. Well, I mean, you could smell it right there on the Rectech Road <laughs> breezeway. Because I know those guys are going to come down and get something good. They might be Bal Ravens fan Baltimore Ravens fans. We like the Ravens. Are you a Ravens fan? Well, my father-in-law is a big Ravens fan, but it's kind of hard to be Ravens fans because they're kind of like the Redskins that got their name changed. They're not normally pretty good. <laughs> but um, I'm a fan of Ray Lewis. He would annihilate people on the field. <laughs> like, he wouldn't just tackle you. Like, he'd hit you so hard, he'd, like, snap your head off. Chef Craig, Peter McBride asks, what temp are we cooking the steaks and bread at? We're at 500 degrees on that RT700. We seared these off about 10 minutes. They're going to be perfect. We will slice those and make this look dynamite um, but look at that blue cheese herb butter on the top oh gosh that looks so all right come on delicious. let's just go ahead delicious and do one of these look at that steak mm. perfectly medium ooh, rare ooh, ooh, ooh. and rare right there that's man steak. guys you outdid yourself chef greg super that looks super awesome. tender and i don't mind all that delicious blue cheesy sort of juice going all over my salad mm. I'm okay with that. Mm. Mm. So we're just going to kind of pile it high. Mm. I don't know what you guys are eating for lunch, but Chef Greg has thrown it down for lunch break today, everybody. Man, that looks delicious. Shoot, Educational yeah. and delicious, Chef Greg. I mean, you got to show people, you know what? You teach a man to fish. I tell him. He eats for the rest of his life. That's right. You cook him fish, he'll eat good for a day. For a day. I want you guys to eat good for the rest of your lives. That's Chef right. John, come in here with me, buddy. All right, I'm coming. Look at this steak. Chef Look Greg, real that. quick though, how do you? Uh, what's the best way you found to clean those grill grates? Um, I just burn them off, man. Yeah. You guys, that too big? Ooh, I need to no. get a. No, okay. I got, I got a big one. I'm going knife. back in the board here. Okay, yeah, me too. Cheers, Cheers buddy. To, yeah. Cheers to you guys. Uh. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Uh, when? Are you kidding me? That's not right. It's so good. But tender, we've got delicious. Our salad. God. Our crostini. Oh. You got any of this cheese and juice right there? Just go on the top. That's it. And uh, there is a fork shortage here at Rectech Girls Worldwide Headquarters. <laughs> um, so we have no forks. So I can't eat the salad, but I know it's delicious. But I will do one of these. I'll grab the little tomato on the side. Eat one of those, because why not? Oh, man. Mm. But. Gosh, that's ah, it's so amazing. Good. But make sure you guys follow us on all social media. We got fantastic stuff going on all week long. Tomorrow, make sure you join uh, myself, Jody, and Chef John. We do after hours every Wednesday here on Facebook at 5 o'clock. Make sure you join us uh, later today. Jody and Madeline are going to do Ask Me Anything. That's going to be on Instagram. It kind of happens when it happens. Sometimes it's 2 o'clock. It could be 3 o'clock. It could be 4 o'clock. It depends on his day. But make sure you guys jump over to Instagram. Make sure you set your notifications and wish him a belated happy birthday because he would love it. And then every Thursday, we've got Rectech Rolls lunch break. Jody Flanagan, your Rectech Rolls expert, is going to be rocking that every day. That's going to be on YouTube. So make sure you guys ring that bell and subscribe on YouTube because we do go live over there too. You thought we were just Facebook and Instagram. No. We're Facebook, we're Instagram, we're YouTube, we're TikTok, we're That's everywhere. Right. We're everywhere. We've actually invented a new social media platform. But I can't tell you about it just yet. Oh, uh, don't tell them, Chef Greg. And then every Friday, well, you can't figure out Product Spotlight is going to be Facebook at 4 o'clock. Uh, Chef John and Jody show you some behind-the-scenes action and some fun stuff. And then every Friday is Fun Day Friday. It's 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. We're going to spin that wheel of rec tech. We're going to give something away. We're going to have a lot of fun with you guys. But from Chef John, myself, and all of us here at the Rectech Rolls Worldwide Headquarters, and those of us watching live on the breezeway over there, yeah, about buddy. to come down and get something good to eat, <laughs> we will see you at, at the, the Rectech. Rec -tech. Do, do, do. Donald saying shoot, yeah. Do, do, Bill do. Strong's, wow. Do, do, do. Benson Curry, what's the giveaway? You got to follow us, bro. You got to go over there. Fun day Friday last week and see what happens. When the sun starts going down. Is that how to build purchase? It after you go to like. rectechgirls.com. Check it out. We got them in red, white, and blue. Do, do, Ricky do.